If you've watched any of my videos on this channel, then you know I'm a fan of Atari, I'm a fan of small computers, I love to test out different types of controllers, I love everything nostalgia based, and I love computers. So this Atari VCS kind of brings all that together in one package. So in this video, we're going to be testing out and checking out this Atari VCS computer. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be looking at the Atari VCS computer. Now I know I'm really late to the game, and that's because basically when this thing came out, it looked really cool, but I just wasn't sure I wanted to spend that much money on it, so I just kept on waiting and waiting and waiting until uh, the, the right deal showed up, and the right deal finally showed up. So I found this thing cheap enough on a sale that I went ahead and grabbed it. So what it basically is, is a small little computer. It's a Ryzen-based computer that can run, obviously it can run Windows, but it has its own little uh, system on here that has some old Atari games on it. It comes with a, I think they call this the modern controller, and then it comes with something that looks more like a classic Atari controller, but I think this thing also acts as a spinner, which would be great because a lot of the classic Atari games needed some kind of a paddle or spinner to it. So maybe it works as a paddle, maybe it works as a spinner. We'll find that out. But basically everything in here is the makeups of a decent computer for running old type, you know, games and kind of grab that nostalgia feel from you. So let's go ahead and address the first elephant in the room, and that is the performance of the PC itself. So this thing's been out for a couple years now, and when it first came out, it got a lot of criticism for how underpowered the computer was itself. You know, it got a lot of criticism for some of the des uh, design choices of the processor uh, that's in there and, you know, how underpowered it is. And I'm going to go ahead and say that may be true, but that's probably not what this thing was meant to do. If you're looking for something that can play AAA games and play them well then this is probably not the system for you. You could take the same amount of money and go buy a Xbox One S and get a lot more performance. So that's not basically what this is for. So when I take a look at this, I'm not gonna be looking at it from, this, from the standpoint of how does this compare dollar for dollar up against something like an Xbox that can play those AAA games. I'm gonna be comparing this up against what a cheap, you know, two to $300 computer would play and really, in, in all honesty, I was more concerned about these controllers here. You know, I was more intrigued by these controllers. Anybody can put together a cheap PC, but these controllers are hopefully going to be a, unique enough that they're worth some amount of money to me uh, for playing these retro games. And then in that case, this thing is just even cheaper and cheaper. So that's how I'm going to look at it, and that's how I'm going to evaluate the overall uh, value to me personally. Uh, everybody's going to have their own assigned value to something like this. So for me personally, that's how I'm going to assign the value and see if this overall package together is worth the discounted price that I paid for it. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. Let's pull out all the pieces, take a look at them, and then we'll kind of go over the specs to remind anybody that hasn't even heard of this before what this is and what's inside. And then we'll, we'll take a look at, obviously, the, the games that are built in and, and see how those play. And just before we open it up, let's go ahead and take a look at the back here because uh, it describes a little bit more about what what's inside and, and what it's meant to be. So it says, an icon reimagined. Atari returns to the living room with the Atari VCS, a complete modern gaming and video computer system blending the best of consoles and PCs to delight a whole new generation of gamers and creators. So that's the intent, right? This thing is supposed to be a console-style but computer-driven system. We've got two controllers here, the wireless modern controller with USB charge and play cable, and then the Atari VCS wireless classic joystick with USB charge and play cable. Now looking at the rest of this here, um, I'm guessing this Atari VCS vault is going to be maybe the software that's that's driven in this thing. It says it has a PC mode also um, that we can even upgrade some of the, the parts inside it. And in fact, um, like I said, I'm not too concerned about making this thing into a supercomputer, but since the parts are so cheap right now, I did buy some RAM to uh, to max out the RAM that it'll take, and I did buy a one terabyte SSD drive to uh, 
to give it some more room in case we put windows on it. Uh, but, but just looking at some of these pictures here, this is the one that jumps out at me first. This is obviously a picture of the, the classic game Venture, but it is definitely much better graphics than the Venture game. So I'm guessing that's going to be part of this VCS vault, some kind of reimagined games. So if that's the case, then I'm all for it. Now, taking a Atari game from you know the 70s and making it look this good is not a AAA game, but it's taking a game that was well-loved and just giving it a little bit of facelift. So if that's the kind of stuff that we're to expect from this system, then for me, that's going to be perfect. I don't need to play Fortnite or Call of Duty or you know the latest... RPG on this type of system. I've got computers for that. I've got consoles for that. I want to just plug this thing in and play some classics. And if they're reimagined classics, then that's even better. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. So along with the criticism about performance, I have also heard rumblings about how much love was put into the manufacturing of this system here. And you can see already that these things individually boxed here, I'm guessing two controllers, and the, uh, the main console itself. You can see how much love is put into them. They could have just put these in cardboard boxes. They could have just shoved them into that, you know, that pretty outside box. But they took the time to, you know, print some awesome graphics, put their logo on it, and just let us know, you know, as fans of Atari or as fans of classic gaming, that this stuff right here was made for us. So let's continue to get this stuff open and check it all out. So first up, this is obviously going to be one of the controllers. And we've even got a quick start guide on here. It shows us how to pair the controller to our system. How to toggle VCS slash PC mode. So we'll figure out what that means. So this is obviously the modern controller. Looks very much like any other controller that you'd see up on my board here. And it feels pretty good. It's got a D-pad, a couple analog sticks, all the buttons that you need, the A, B, X, Y, start and select. This is going to be our, our middle button. Oops, I've, I've awakened the beast. Got a couple analog triggers and shoulder buttons. So I'm going to tell you just first impression wise that this controller itself does not feel as quality made as maybe something like this Xbox controller. But like I said, that's just first impressions, just feeling it. It feels a little light, but that just may just be uh, my first impressions. Uh, no real texture on here. It is kind of smooth. Uh, no texture on the back either. But again, I'm, I'm comparing this controller, which came bundled in with the system, with a controller that has been tried and true over many generations of a video game system. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt for now and let's go ahead and keep on opening these box. Let's see what the next controller looks like. So same instructions on here. And here is the classic controller. And in the bottom of these boxes are the cables. We'll, we'll grab those in a second. Let's get this controller out of the bag here and see what it feels like. So very striking, you know, again, first impression, very striking, uh, very nice looking controller. It's got uh, some rubber on the bottom here to, if you're going to have it down on a desk or something, that it will keep a little bit of grip to it. We've got our classic joystick and single button here, but we've got a couple extra buttons. Of course, we're going to need um, some more buttons probably to interface with the, uh, the the UI that's built into the system. And we've even got a shoulder button. That would have just completely blown my mind as a kid growing up with a, a joystick that only had a single button. Having something right here, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's amazing that it's taken us 50 years to figure out where that second button could have gone because sometimes they were put over here. Um, sometimes they were put on the top here because that was the only place that you could, you know, have another button if you're holding this like this. And so, yeah, nice looking controller. It's a little lightweight, but but we'll see uh, how it controls. 
here's our charging port and or using that as a wired controller and let's see yes this thing does rotate it's not spring loaded like a paddle would be it is free spinning like a spinner would be but we'll just have to see how that works with the uh, with the software with the different games to see if we're just using it as a uh, you know just a rotary encoder type thing so yeah two controllers looks nice like I said they take a lot of time to you know engrave in the Atari logo in there so a lot of love was was put into these things so now that we've got the two controllers out let's go ahead and grab the uh, console itself before I grab that console I just grabbed the two cables out of the bottom of the package here interesting that one is coiled up like this and one is wrapped up like this um, considering they're both the same cable they are plenty long so that's nice uh, if you do want to have this thing plugged in and playing at your desk you can definitely have this thing plugged in full time um, little disappointed that they are micro USB and not USB-C but of course this thing came out a couple years ago so that was obviously probably the the choice at the time but still USB-C would have been would have been perfect but who cares they're just cables let's go ahead and get into this bad boy here So again, we got some quick start guide printed right on the box here. Hook it up to a TV, plug it into the wall, pair up your controllers, turn it on, and play some darn games. It doesn't get much easier than that. So let's see how this thing is here. So they had two choices on this, and that was the, uh, the wood grain inspired one and then there's one that was just all black now I went with the the wood grain inspired one because that's kind of what the Atari's look like when I was growing up now this thing right here on the box it's kind of hard to tell that it's in Atari inspired obviously you can tell a little bit that's Atari inspired but now that I've got this thing out and it's sitting in front of me this little angle right here going from the main console up to here it definitely has the shape and, and appearance of the Atari 2600 so I'm not sure if that was solely there just for aesthetics that little bump there or if they needed it for any type of like cooling or you know stuff that's inside there but that is uh, that is really neat that you can just look at this thing and know hey this is an Atari 2600 inspired device Otherwise, it just looks like any other flat like DVD player or something like that. So looking at the back, we've got a couple USB ports, HDMI port, Ethernet port. Here's the power, and then a power button. So very simple. Everything is well labeled. I like that. Um, but very simple interface. And inside, obviously, is going to be our uh, motherboard that has the, uh, the processor and the RAM and the SSD. Actually, I think it's an EMMC is what's built in there which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to get an SSD in there because I'm just not a big fan of that flash storage that EMMC type flash storage so we're gonna see what we can do to remedy that but we're gonna worry just about how this thing is out of the box first so let's see what else is in the box so here's an advertisement for AntStream Arcade limited offer of $39.99 per year now Obviously, this thing's been sitting in a box for a couple of years. Who knows if this is even a service anymore? We'll have to figure that out. I'm not sure if I'd want to pay $40 a year for uh, this type of stuff, but we'll see what it is. And then we've got our standard, hey, don't return this. If there's something wrong with it, go to our support page. So hopefully we don't need that. And then underneath we've got pretty decent HDMI cable a power cable then here's the power adapter so just a standard AC adapter like you'd have for a small laptop or something and that's basically it so I think the next thing we need to do is get all this unwrapped hook this up to a monitor and see what's on there Okay, as I'm hooking this thing up, uh, just a couple quick notes. One is, again, attention to detail. 
Look at the uh, Atari logo right here on the USB cable. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, and that makes sure that when I have these cables all bundled up somewhere, I don't forget which one this came with, so that's nice. And the other thing is, on the controller, as I plugged it in to charge it, um, each one has a battery guide to let you know, you know how much battery is in there. And as I plugged in the cable, this has a battery guide around it, and then this one had a battery guide right here, battery level indicator. So that's kind of neat that you know where your battery's at. All right, let's get this thing hooked up. All right, so I've got this thing plugged into video capture just to make it easier for you guys to see what I'm seeing. And I've got to go ahead and, and reboot this thing so you can see the, the, the boot screen on it. So let me reach over here and uh, force this thing off. All right, now to go, let me go ahead and boot this thing back up so you can watch the boot up sequence. So there's our Atari logo. And a nice little, uh, you know, Atari boot screen. So that's kind of a nice little touch. And I've got the this uh, modern controller plugged in. And it's recognized that I've just got it plugged in USB. So it's recognizing and it's telling me what button to push. Now this is the first time I've been in this system. So we're going to get uh, live reactions to everything that's going on here. So I push the button. It's giving me a little tutorial of what to do. A for select. Hey, that's that's nice, just in case you're coming from like a Nintendo console and don't know that that's the button you're supposed to push. But it shows us the back button, the context menu, um, main navigation, right and left, main menu. So it's all intuitive, but it is nice to have right there on the screen for us. So now I'm going to select the, the Wi-Fi since I don't have it plugged into an Ethernet cord. Um, this is neat. The uh, the font that they've chosen for the top there, the Choose Your Connection font, is straight out of Atari. So let me take care of this, and then I'll be right back. All right, so it connected to the Wi-Fi. It's going to check for some updates. I wouldn't be surprised if there was updates after, like I said, being in a box for so long. And let's go ahead and create an account. Okay, so I think I've found a problem here, and I'm not the only one because I just Googled real quick. Apparently, whatever software is built into this thing is trying to talk to some server that probably doesn't exist anymore. So I found some instructions on how to reflash this to a, a new version of the operating system, perhaps. So give me a couple minutes, let me try that out, and I'll be back with you as soon as I get a fix for it. All right, so long story short, I had to download a, uh, a new operating system, flash it to a USB stick, and plug that in there, and that's what we're seeing now, is we're going to flash the Atari OS to this thing. Apparently, after it sat in uh, the warehouse for a couple years, they had several major changes to the OS, and it, it just makes all the old systems not work at all. So, I'm technically savvy enough to do something like this, and I'm going to include a video down in the description below of a dude straight from Atari showing you how to do this. But I can imagine there's a bunch of people out there that either wouldn't want to do this or wouldn't know how to do this. And if that's the case, then there's going to be a lot of these things returned back to stores, back to Atari. And uh, so long story short, keep your eyes out for, uh, you know, refurb models that <laughs> someone else didn't figure out how to do and maybe sold cheap. So... We're going to go ahead and let this thing flash, and I'll come back when it's all done. All right, so take two. Let's see if we can do this the right way this time. Thanks to Atari for supplying that file to us, but really weird that you have to do that in the first place. But we got past it, so I flashed it, and this is our first reboot after the flash. Let's see if I can get further into the uh, setup process. So we still got the same kind of cool uh, intro logo, same little welcome screen with the controller. And let me go ahead and get past the, uh, the language and Wi-Fi screen, and I'll step back up where we left off the first time. 
All right, so this time it found an update, it updated the BIOS, and it restarted for us, so that's new. So let's go ahead and let that reboot and see how far we get now. And here we are flashing the BIOS. So the USB boot key that it created actually had a option to do this, but um, looks like if you go ahead and just install the new OS, it'll do this for us. So I'm gonna let this BIOS get flashed and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so let's see if we can actually create an account this time. And this is definitely farther than we got before. So we get to actually select an icon. We'll go ahead with the, uh, the duck dragon from the adventure game, enter our display name, enter an email, enter a pin, six digit pin, add your birthday. I wonder if they're gonna send me a gift and enter your public bio. That should do. And after verifying my email, looks like I'm all set up. All right, so here's our home screen, I guess. The shelf is a little empty. I got the Atari VCS Companion, Chrome, VCS Vault, and then looks like AntStream must still be a thing. So looks like it says it's downloading an update. Looks like it's downloading an update for the Atari VCS Companion also. Let me go ahead and tab through this here and see. So the games, looks like it's just the AntStream and the VCS Vault right now. Apps is gonna be Chrome. PC mode or the VCS companion. There's a store and everything's loading up. So I'm guessing if it, if it finds the stuff on the store, it must still be a store there. And it looks like we can buy some games. So we'll have to check that out. I've got an empty friends list. So let's see if the companion is done updating yet. Looks like it. So let's see what this Atari VCS companion is. Oh, so it's just a link to download some app on my phone. All right, so I'll do that later. I can figure out how to get back. Okay, so the B button and the back button doesn't work. Main menu button doesn't work. All right, so let's exit to dashboard. So I finally just held down that main menu button, what they called that. And I got back here. All right, so let's check out the Atari VCS Vault. I've been recording this for a couple of hours. I want to play a stupid game already. Okay, so that did nothing. So I couldn't just press A on it. I had to hit the like the start button and then hit launch. So I don't know what that was all about. Now, don't expect to hear any audio. I don't have any audio. Oh, yes I do. Make sure that's turned down enough in the recording, just in case. And so, all right, so here we go. We got some arcade looking games. Looks like they're in alphabetical order, so that's good. Now after this kind of first impressions video, I may have to come back here and play through these games again with the Atari controller that I did a video about that has a trackball and spinner and see if any of those work because you got games like Millipede, Centipede, and Crystal Castles. It'd be nice to think that a actual trackball would work so we'll have to try that out. So I'm not sure how this is going to work with different types of controllers since the majority of these uh, arcade games, these classic arcade games, are using everything except for a joystick. <laughs> so you got like Missile Command, which has a trackball, Millipede, Centipede, which have a trackball, Pong, which has the dials. Um, so yeah, we'll have to try one of these out. Sprint, Breakout, Tempest, Warlords, and back to Asteroid. So let's go ahead and just try Asteroid and see what happens. A little gallery here, a couple different stickers and whatnot. So how do I play? Here we go. I was on gallery, so let's go to let's see what's in the options first. We got control options. So it tells us what the different buttons are gonna be. Thrust, hyperspace, rotate left, rotate right. So it's using the looks like the uh, D-pad here for most of this fire 
and rumble on. Let's get out of here. We can change how many lives we start with. We can change how it looks on the screen. We can mix some of the volume together. And let's actually go to play. So we're going to play some classic asteroids. And I am using the modern controller. So let's hit start. And let's see. So the, the joysticks do not work. It did say that rotate right and left was going to be using just the D-pad. So I'm using just the D-pad right now and A to fire. So I should be able to thrust if I hit up on the D-pad, so that works. And I'm playing by watching a uh, watching the, the video capture of this, so there is a little bit of lag for me. So if it looks like I'm not doing too great, let's just go ahead and, and uh, blame it on that. <laughs> that little bit of video lag that we got. So this is, this is not too bad. Let's try out this hyperspace button. I think it was B. Yep, so there we go. So that's cool. I, I like the uh, the bezels on it because this was a uh, vertical screen game and the arcades. So I like how they put that on there. They put a little bit of you know screen down at the bottom to show which player is playing. So let's see how we can get out of this. Hit the start button and back to main menu. So let's try out something that shouldn't work with, with buttons and joysticks. Let's try something like Crystal Caver Caverns. So we're just going to hit play here. And now I'm using the analog stick. So the analog stick works all right. I think this would be maybe easier than the trackball, actually. So it's kind of, I wouldn't say cheating, but it's definitely easier than using that trackball. So like I said, I'd like to come back and play some of these games with that controller that I have that has a trackball and and the spinner on it so let's get out of this game and find a spinner game and see how that works all right so pong right out of the right out of the gate here is using up and down on the analog stick and if you've seen my video which i will link below on the the review of the atari 50 um playing it with that atari joystick you'll see that using the controls like uh joysticks just aren't great for pong so this is the same way. Let's see if I can find some way of getting into options. Let's go back to the main menu. Let's go to the options and see what my control options are. So here's move, relative or absolute. So we do have relative versus absolute and we do have a, uh, looks like, so I have somehow just completely uh, bonk this up or it's not letting me do anything to reassign this movement. I've obviously told it to reassign the movement, but no matter what I push, there's just nothing. So the only thing I can do is hold down this main menu button and exit the dashboard. So let's go back in there and see if I can, uh, get back into that Pong game and, and change the controls again. All right, so let's go back to options and controls on Pong. So now it's actually letting me get to where I can set the sensitivity, I'm guessing. Let's see if I can change the move button or the move. Okay, so this time it actually let me change it. So this red, what looks like a button to me, is actually the red joystick. Because the controller, if you remember looking at it, there was a red joystick and there's a black joystick. So it looks like I can change that to the D-pad, change it to the black joystick. So I'll have to go back with the other controller and try this again with the classic controller and see if it just lets me use that as a spinner. So let's go back. It says to switch games, I can hit X to change between Arcade, Atari 2600, 
and here's an overall list. So it looks like arcade or 2600, and then we've got different categories here. So let's just scroll through the Atari 2600 real quick. 3D tic-tac-toe, concentration, adventure, asteroids, video cube, backgammon, basic math, basketball, blackjack, bowling, brain games, breakout, canyon bomber, casino, centipede, championship soccer, circus Atari, code breaker, combat, combat two, crystal castles, demons to diamonds, desert falcon, dodge em, double dunk, fatal run, flag capture, football, golf, gravitar, hangman, haunted house, home run, Human Cannonball, Maze Craze, Millipede, Miniature Golf, Missile Command. And this, this is not the first time this has happened where this thing just starts going wonky by itself. So I'm guessing the, uh, the analog stick must have a little bit of drift to it. Because, um, yeah, it, it just went crazy. So I don't know where I was. We'll just go backwards from here. Yard's Revenge. Warlords, Video Pinball, Video Chess, Video Checkers, Tempest, Sword Quest, Sword Quest, Sword Quest. Okay, there's a couple different, Fire World and Water World and Earth World. Surround, Super Football, Super Breakout, Super Baseball, Submarine Commander, Stunt Cycle, Street Racer, Stellar Track, Steeplechase, Starship, Star Raiders, Sprint Master, Space War, Slot Racers, Slot Machine, Skydiver, Sentinel, Secret Quest, Save Mary, Return to Haunted House, Real Sports Volleyball, Real Sports Tennis, Football, Real Sports Football, here it goes again, uh, Baseball, Radar Lock, Race, Auto Racing, Cloud Run, Pong Sports, Outlaw, Off the Wall, Night Driver, Missile Command, so, so we've seen them all, there's got to be, I don't know, 70 or 80 of these things in here. Which, if you've ever used, if you've ever bought one of the Atari, what do they call them, flashback series, then it looks like a lot of the same games that you'd see on there. Obviously missing the Activision games, it would be great to have the Activision games, but I know how licensing stuff works. So all of these games, it looks like the majority of these games would want to use the classic controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this controller and plug in the classic controller and let's go back and try some of these games. All right, so I can't pass up trying out Adventure. So I've got the classic controller plugged in. And okay, so I'm in the gallery. So where's the back button on this thing? This guy, yep. So let's go straight to play. Got a couple options here. Let's just go right in. And wow, there is some scan line action going on. <laughs> with this screen. I'm going to guess that's going to be one of the options to change and the video options. But yeah, this looks like an old TV, but a bad version of an old TV. Bad enough that I'm going to see if I can change that right now. So let's go into options, display, Bezel art, I'm fine with scan lines. Let's go ahead and turn those off and see how that works. All right, so that looks better to me. It obviously looks very crisp. So if you don't like the very crisp look of seeing old Atari games looking like this, then maybe keep those scan lines on, but I don't know, this, this just looks better to me. I don't need to have hyper-realistic scan lines during these games. So let's go ahead and back out of this one and try out something different. Let's try Breakout. So everybody's played Breakout before if you had an Atari 2600. Uh, let's see here. A couple options to choose from. Let's go right in. And now... I'm using the classic controller, but I'm using the joystick as a spinner. So that's that's a little bit better. So let's see how this thing works. It's a little jerky. I think you can see that in the screen, but it's it's a little jerky. I'm guessing that's just the quality of the encoder that's built into this thing. Now, 
feel-wise, it does not feel like a quality spinner at all. And, and I'm sad to say that. This controller, I was hoping would have a decent spinner to it, but you can see that I'm missing very easy hits here just because it's jerking at the last second. And that's that's not me having a, a, a hyper-caffeinated day. That's just the encoder of this thing just not being real great. So let's back out of this game, see if we can find another game that might use a spinner. Let's try out Pong Sports and see what this thing's all about. So yeah, so I'm I'm controlling the guy on the right here. And you see, I'm trying to stop down at the bottom there, and I'm just not doing it. So I really hope that other controller works. Because it looks like these games could be pretty fun, but with this controller... I just think that it's just impossible to have fun with this controller. And like I said, that's that's actually a, a big part of me purchasing this thing was to see how they did with this classic controller. So yes, I'm very sad to, to say that this thing, and maybe I just got a, a bad one, but this thing is just not good. So let's go back and... I don't know if I have an X button anymore on this thing. Okay, so it says that I can hit this button here. Let's go back to the arcade. And let's try let's try the Pong with this controller in the arcade. So it doesn't look as jerky. It may not look as jerky on the screen, but I can tell you it is uh, it is jerky. I couldn't even hit that one here. Oh, we're going to get stuck in this loop here. There we go. It's amazing I have two points. So again, this is just not a good a good feel. Even even as I'm being successful at hitting the thing, it is just not responding to what I'm doing very well. So let's get out of that. Let's go back to a joystick type game. So let's try one of the arcade games that might use a joystick. And let's just try Centipede to see how well the joystick as a trackball feature works. So happy to say that the, uh, the spinner does nothing. We wouldn't want it to, but I'd, I, I would hate to think that it would start moving if in case I was actually accidentally spinning it but to as expected i've played uh trackball games with the joystick before it feels kind of exactly what i'd expect it to feel you lose some of the the momentum when you're spinning that trackball and the the uh, your character continues to move a little bit after you stop spinning it that's what you're losing it's very you know precise controls which in some cases is fine, but in other cases it just doesn't have the same the same feel as the uh, you know true to arcade feel. So let's go ahead and get out of here and see if we can back out of this uh, the system here and go back and check out what else was on the dashboard. All right, so I've got a pretty good feeling of what Chrome is. I don't have a joystick or keyboard plugged in, so I don't think that would be a very good. Uh, experience and up at the top it's saying something about the firmware is uh has an update to it it just popped up for a second and now it's gone so maybe that's something i can find in the system menu let's look at system updates 
and it says that the operating system is up to date and it says the BIOS is up to date. So I'm not sure what that was. Let's go back to the games. All right, future Chris here, just uh, checking back after I stopped recording, which you'll see the rest of the recording coming up here. I did uh, notice this in the system here that you can update controllers and there was a firmware update. So if you remember, I, th I saw a little thing flash up at the top that said there was some kind of firmware update that must have been for this controller. So I updated the classic controller, the classic joystick, and uh, went through the Calibrate controller, which is right underneath here, and did that, and went back and tried the Pong game and stuff like that. It wasn't any better. So I'm not sure uh, what the firmware update was, but it, it wasn't to make that spinner any better. So back to the video. All right, let's just go to the Ant Stream menu here and see at least what it tells us. And again, I can't just hit the button to play it. I have to hit the start button and go to launch. That is just a strange UI choice. I'm not sure why. So I can log in or create an account. I don't think I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> let's get out of this. So let's go explore the store and just see what kind of options we have. We've got nine featured games, Avian Knights, Mr. Run and Jump. Let's see if it has any kind of uh, demo to something like Mr. Run and Jump. That's a $25 game. So I can buy it or I can redeem it. And here's some uh, screenshots. So it looks like a platformer of some sort. Now, I think I saw a video on this that this was made specifically for this Atari VCS and that they're eventually going to make uh, cartridges for your old Atari 2600. So I think that's cool and I think that making, making games for old systems is uh, a valiant effort. So that's why it's $25. You got to support got to support these developers. Let's see what else we got here. Let's look at something like this Avian Knights, a $20 game. Looks again like something that was definitely created recently. But this one definitely has some updated graphics, so I don't imagine this would be playing on your Atari 2600 system. So this must be just something that's an indie uh, game that's made for the system. But it looks like we got 105 games to choose from. Got some apps to choose from. So looks like some streaming services. I'm not sure if I would use uh, Google Docs and Google Sheets on this thing, but hey, it is a, uh, a small computer, so you could actually do some productivity on here. Apple TV Plus, that's pretty cool. That's not on every uh, streaming device, so that's neat that they got that. Watch some sports. We got the Test Gamepad app, and you can uh, log into Discord. So yeah, so pretty much any of the uh, streaming services that you'd want, Hulu, Max, Prime Video, YouTube, uh, looks pretty good. So I know we've got this PC mode was on the uh, App Store or on the Apps page. Let's just click on that and see what happens. And this one, it actually let me click on the A button and try it. So the Atari VCS allows you to boot into a new operating system when restarting to boot into a new OS, plug in a USB thumb drive containing a bootable version of your preferred OS and press A to restart. Okay, so it's basically just a quick and easy way to boot into a, a thumb drive without having to figure out, you know, going into your BIOS and changing the boot sequence and that kind of stuff. So that's that's neat that it has that. So I think what what I will have to do is get Windows running on this thing or have some kind of Linux variant uh, to boot into to test that out, but not in this video. So I think that's basically uh, everything to see just right out the gate here. Um, oh, it, and after I used that, it did put that on the home screen, so that's nice. So I guess as you start using things, they will populate onto this home screen as just an easy way to get to them. So that's a nice touch. That's That explains why the screen was kind of empty to begin with, and now as we use things, it'll it'll show up there. It'd be nice if you could take actually like your favorite games from the, the VCS vault and have them show up down here, but I think you have to actually go into that 
app each time and uh, and launch them within that system. So I think that's about all we're going to do in this uh, first look video. We made it through the uh, the challenges of updating the entire operating system, flashing the operating system onto it. Um, that's more than I would ever hope that anybody else would have to do to a system, but it looks like if you buy one of these um, past 2023, that's what you're going to have to do. So like I said, I will link that video down below where the guy from Atari tells you exactly how to do it. It's probably like a 10 minute video. Go check that out if you buy one of these and uh, make sure you have a thumb drive, like an eight gigabyte thumb drive and have some way of downloading a file that's about almost two gigabytes. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, but if you wanna see more out of this thing, uh, like I said, I do have uh, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. If you wanna see me throw that in there, let me know down in the comments below and I can make a video out of that. There's plenty of videos showing how to open these things up and uh, install them, but I'm not sure how up to date they are. I would like to use that one terabyte drive perhaps to uh, install Windows 10 on there and uh, and see what the Windows environment feels like with this, uh, this little computer. As far as performance wise, there's nothing built into this thing that I think would fully task the performance so you would never have a problem playing these types of games um you know with the built-in eight gigs of ram and the the two core processor so that's that's not a concern it's only if you go to install windows and start putting maybe steam on there and, and throwing your favorite games that you would find that performance might be lacking so like i said it's only because ram and ssds are so cheap right now that i even bought them to put in this thing so if you want to see that, then go ahead and uh, let me know down in the comments below. And then also, if you'd like to see this guy used with that other controller that has the true spinner and the true trackball and a nice, uh, you know, arcade style joystick, then let me know and I will hook that up and see how far I can get through these games with those controls. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. If you want to see more stuff, more classic stuff, more controller stuff, more everything geeky stuff, then check out the rest of the videos on the channel and maybe even hit that subscribe button. But thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.